everyone, and welcome to episode nine, I believe, of the I'll Knit If I Want To podcast. My name is Jamie, and I'm the host of this little podcast about knitting, spinning, and dyeing yarn. You can find me on Etsy at Beautiful Mess Yarn Works. You can find me on Instagram at Beautiful Mess Yarn Works and on Ravelry as Beautiful Mess Yarn. So thanks for joining me today. It is an absolutely dreary, cold, wet day in central Pennsylvania. We have yet to get any snow to really speak of. It's been unseasonably warm. The high today was in the 60s. And we are apparently going to get a potential 48 inches of snow starting tomorrow night. So that's kind of exciting. I've been looking forward to winter in order to wear all of my hand knits, but quite honestly, it has been too warm on quite a few days. So haven't really had that opportunity. Um, although it is dark and dreary out, I normally try to film and use natural light, but that was getting harder and harder as the season sort of went along. So I finally invested in a new lighting system, which I'm really happy with. I feel like it's really good light. Um, everything I can see behind me is true to color, so that's going to take care of the lighting issues we had, so hopefully the quality of the videos are better for you guys. So a few things to talk about today. I'm about a week behind on this episode. I try to do every two weeks, but things have been extremely busy here uh, with you know a lot going on. We were out of town. The kids were both super sick. Um, you know, just irregular activities and school. Uh, my husband right now actually took my son with him to take my daughter to dance class so that I could squeeze in a little filming and get this episode up for you guys. So we're going to start with something really exciting. And those are the prize winners from the Cold Shoulder Cal. So in the Ravelry group, and if you're not a member of that, please head over and join it. It's beautiful mess. Um, I'm sorry, the I'll Knit If I Want To Ravelry group. Um, we had a chatter thread. You'll have to excuse my dog barking at something. Apparently something's really interesting downstairs. But we had a chatter thread and we had a finished objects thread. So I received so many awesome prizes generously donated by some other makers in our community and we have select i've gone ahead and selected a winner just by a random number generator um for each of those threads so for the chatter prize sorry and i'm sort of moving my notes because i don't want to get this wrong so for the chatter prize and some of this is still in plastic and i don't really want to take it out because I don't want to ruin it for the uh, prize winners that are going to be re The first thing we have is this super cute, uh, like, iced pumpkin latte progress keeper from the Gnome Knitter. And the person who wins the Chatter Prize is also going to be getting this sweet um, sheep sort of little notions pouch, which was generously donated by Steel City Stitcher. And they're also going to receive two skeins of my single ply DK weight yarn in the colorway Grassy Knees. So this is all going to go to the winner of the chatter thread. And the random number drawn was 87, which is Hobble on Ravelry. But she is also Pearl Ridge Fibers on Instagram. So congratulations. Um... I will send you a message on Instagram to get your information and send that prize package out right away. So good job. All right. And the finished object prize. So let me share with you what comes along with that. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of reaching behind me here for this. The first part of that is this amazing, amazing one of a kind project bag from Woodsy and Wild. And it's awesome. It has interior pockets, which has sort of become my new favorite thing about project bags. So this will be going to our finished object prize winner. They're also going to be receiving one of Andre Sunit's um, hand-painted sock blanks. And this one is actually her sheep sock blank. And it is so 
cute. And when she was doing these regularly, it was almost impossible to catch an update. So this person is very lucky. So they'll be receiving that as well. In addition to that, they're going to get a six inch DPN holder donated again by the gnome knitter. They're going to get a loaded, and this one I might, I'm sorry, I apologize for the crinkling. Um, I'm gonna take these out so you can see these, they're awesome. A loaded baked potato um, stitch marker with butter and all the fixins. And then just a regular potato progress keeper. And size one six inch um, Chigu DPNs to go in the holder. So the winner of that finished object prize is going to be all set to net to, I'm sorry, to knit an epic pair of socks. So the winner of that finished object thread was post 15, Lorena Valorin on uh, Ravelry and yes, the same on Instagram. So I will send you a private message as well and get your address and ship those right away to you. So congratulations to the winners. That was the first knit along I've hosted and I co-hosted that with Chelsea and Sue from the Legacy Knits podcast. And it was so fun. I loved searching through the hashtag on Instagram and seeing everybody's beautiful shawls. Just the sense of community in the Ravelry um, discussion threads was just amazing. So I'm definitely planning on doing some more knit alongs in the future. So keep an eye out for that. That was, again, that was super fun. So the first segment, regular segment of the podcast is Off the Needles. And I have my shawl that I knit for the cold shoulder knit along. And this is designed by Irina Lawrence. And she is one of the owners of um, Flying Fibers, which is a little yarn, a local yarn shop here. It's in Landisville, PA. And this is the Stathis shawl, which is rather large and absolutely gorgeous. It has this amazing textured border. Um, the yarn is actually their line of yarn. It's called Yorkshire Medley, and it's hand dyed by the other owner of the yarn shop, the mother, Jerry Lawrence. And you can see just this beautiful variegations. It's like a awesome tonal with um, different shades. And it just, it's this big, fluffy, um, it's a long wool. It's very warm. It's not itchy at all. Excuse me while I have my um, vein moment here. But it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I love the color. I love the stitch. And this shawl is actually the color reference that I took in for my yarn tattoo. So I think this one is always going to have sort of a special uh, place in my heart. And I will post um, a picture of that tattoo so you can sort of see it along with the shawl so that you can see that. So I really love this. I'm excited to take this with me to the yarn retreat this weekend that is going to be hosted by those two fabulous ladies. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the episode. So that's the only thing I have off the needles. I was working feverishly to finish that by the deadline of my own knit along because it would be rather silly if I didn't. So that is done. I do have a few things on the needle, the, on my needles. The first one I'm going to show you is my find your fade shawl. And I caught the bug. I resisted as long as I could and then could no longer stand it. So I am on the third color and this entire find your fade shawl is going to be knit in hedgehog fibers, um, skinny singles, which is probably just my favorite yarn to work with. So it starts um, with Monet, which you can see is sort of a minty blue with some orange um, pinks. This I had left over from my exploration station shawl. So I thought it would be a good yarn to start with because it didn't require much yardage. And then that fades into Budgie 
which is another um, hedgehog fibers colorway. I thought that was a nice um, transition. And then the next color I have is Fool's Gold. And the more I looked at it, I started to get a little bit concerned that maybe it wasn't a very good color choice as far as, you know, melting the two together. But you can see that Budgie has some yellow um, in it that sort of peeks out here and there. And then joined with the Fool's Gold, which has some blue in it. So it's sort of melted nicely. And I, I really like that transition between the second and the third colors. So I'm going to try to show you what's coming next. So I'm just going to drape this here. So after Fool's Gold, I will add uh, Monarch, which has some of the similar uh, yellow tones, then also has orange. Um, so that is next. And after the Monarch, I will go to Genie, which has, you can see some of the same oranges between the two. So I thought that would be a good fade. And then finally, this one says name that's game, but this was actually dyed exclusively for Do You Knit in New Jersey. And it, that is really bright. It's, my camera is sort of confused like how do i show that color so and that has some yellow but it is really going to pull out the pinks um from genie so super excited t enjoyable knit um you know sort of tv knitting with the garter and um simple lace so that has been really fun to knit all of those yarns were purchased at do you knit um, in New Jersey, which if you have never been there, it's hedgehog heaven. You have to check it out. So super fun knit, excited to sort of see that progress. And I will have a lot of knitting time this weekend to work on that. And I'll talk, um, a little bit about that later. The next thing I had on my needles is I've sort of caught the design bug and, I thought a really good place to start would be socks. Um, you know, I have the particular heels and toe decreases that I always use and always like, and I thought it would be really fun to come up with a pattern um, for that. So I started with this yarn, which is my own colorway. This is um, Apple Crisp on my Harris sock, which is my tweed sock. And the the pattern was getting lost in the tweed. So I went ahead and frogged that. And I'm, I'm learning that designing is a lot of knitting, frogging, knitting, frogging, knitting, frogging. Uh, frogging has sort of been the story of my life the last week. So um, I decided not to use that. So that'll get put away and used for something else. And what I did decide to go with, and I'm not going to show you any more of this because I don't want you to see... The pattern but here's the ribbing what I did go with was a sweet Georgia um, tough love sock in her saffron colorway because I thought a single color uh, solid color would actually help to show off the um, patterning in the sock so I'm working on this one I'm liking the way it's turning out I may do a little adjusting um, so keep an eye out for that. I'm probably going to be asking for test knitters and um, once that pattern is complete, but we are far from that at this point. Still sort of working out the kinks on that. So that's another thing that I have on my needles. Um, the last thing I have on my needles is technically not on my needles right now. It's sort of a tragic story, but I began knitting the West End cardigan from Hannah Fettig's new pattern collection called Texture. And it was my first cabling, chugging along, chugging along, made a teeny mistake on the cable, but not anything that, you know, was extremely noticeable and it was down towards the bottom. So I decided to keep going, keep going finished the first skein of my Quince and Company Lark in the Parsley colorways, joined the second, and I'm knitting and knitting. And I look at it and I think, well, that 
cable looks awful short and fat compared to the others. And apparently what happened was um, my stitch counter, which is, I don't have one of those types up here, just the traditional little cylindrical ones where you turn the numbers on each side, either was turned in my bag or one of my littles had turned it or when my husband took the middle part out to make it hollow, <laughs> he had turned it. Um, so here is my West End cardigan. I had to frog the entire thing. So last night I decided to attack it again. I cast on the number of stitches that I need and I start knitting and I get all the way to the end of the first row of ribbing and realize that I had made a mistake. So I had to frog it again. So this gorgeous Quince and Company Lark in the Parsley colorway resembles nothing close to a sweater, but I am determined to get this right and um, I will be recasting this on either tonight or tomorrow so that I have a little bit ready to go um, this weekend when I head to the fiber retreat. So on the bobbin, no real update. I'm still spinning the Rolex from Classy Squid Fiber Company, which I will be pairing with some just soft gray merino to do a two color shawl. But I did get some happy mail as far as spinning and fiber is concerned. And I caught one of Hey Lady Hay's shop update and I got four plus ounces of 100% merino wool comb top. And I got it in the Pleased as Punch colorway and this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the colors in this and I mean from the blues to the greens to the pinks. Then there's a little bit of sort of blackish gray with the green and then kind of goes back to a similar color on the other end and this is so soft. I sort of just want to wear it as a scarf without even spinning it. It's super soft, super squishy, and I'm really excited um, to get started on this. And I would really like to try to spin a fingering weight yarn to be able to create some socks with this. So gorgeous, gorgeous fiber from Hey Lady Hey. Um, follow her on Instagram. She has, she takes beautiful photographs. Um, of both, you know, all things fiber and her little homestead and um, just super nice. I've had some conversations with her just, you know, online, super nice. And I'm really excited to spin this up. Um, so that is going to be next when I am finished with what I currently have on my bobbins. So moving along um, to from the pots and I'm going to share a colorway that's rejoining the party and also a new one to the party and these are going with me I guess now is a good a time as ever so this weekend my mother and I are going to be going to the flying fibers fiber retreat which is held at the grit Gretna Glen campgrounds in Pennsylvania and we went last year and it was amazing I'd only been knitting for a couple months last year so I didn't have very much to take and show off um, I hadn't really started spinning yet so I spent the whole weekend just staring longingly at everybody's spinning wheels and beautiful um, intricate knitting that was going on and we are headed back and Jerry and Rini have graciously asked if I would like to host a trunk show during the yarn retreat. So I'm going to be taking a lot of yarn to the trunk show, some new colorways, old colorways. I'll be taking my new MCN base with me, which is my um, posh sock base with me dyed up on sort of some springtime colors because we're starting to get excited for that. And I'm going to share with you some of the classics that I'll be taking. So this is a colorway that I've done before. And this is called the Get Down. And it's a minty green with sort of some limey, lemon limey yellow. 
um, some darker green speckles and some hot pink. So this is the get down and I have this both on um, my single ply fingering base and then also my two ply um, sock yarn. You can see some of the green better on this one. So these will be going to the trunk show. I also have, this is the new colorway, which is called Tie Hot, and it is a very lemony highlighter yellow with speckles of hot pink, orange, and green, and I just was inspired, and as soon as I saw the way um, this came out, it made me think of going to Thai restaurants with my husband and he orders the food hot and they ask how hot and he says Thai hot, which is about as hot as it gets. And he really can withstand it and enjoy it. So this colorway is Thai hot and that will be going with me. And I also have this on my single ply base and the two ply sock base. And you can see here um, some of the really fun speckling on this. So I'm excited to introduce this colorway. So those will be going with me. And then I also have some inventory left from the Valentine's um, update, some gorgeous um, colors. So this first one is called Wham Bam. Thank you, ma'am. And it is, I have it both on the single ply base and the sparkly sock base with um, Silver Selena. And this is a light pink base with some purple, blue, and hot pink speckles. So this is a new favorite of mine. So this will be going. And then this one is called um, Love Me Tender. And this is actually on the sparkle base. And it's a light pink with sort of lilac um, variegation and a little bit of lilac um, speckling in there as well. So this is really pretty. I think this would make a really gorgeous um, add to a gorgeous shawl or uh, make a really cool sparkly pair of socks. So that will be going with me as well. So that's what I have from the pots. Um, I am currently dyeing yarn for an upcoming collaboration with Steel City Stitcher on February 25th at noon. Apparently the dog is excited for that one as well. February 25th at noon, um, those kits will go live. She has created the most gorgeous project bags and coordinating little notion pouches that go with it. And it will also have a skein of my hand dyed yarn in one of my um, skinny stripe colorways, which if you are knitting a sock, um, you would get one stripe one row stripe of a solid color than one row stripe of speckles. So I'll um, start knitting up a sample to sort of show the way that knits up as we start really posting photographs of the kits and, and get those ready to go live. There's going to be a really limited number, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, this episode is a little bit short. There was a little bit less to share. I was hoping well, I was excited to share my West End cardigan until I had to pull it out last night. So um, that is that. I am planning on doing some filming at the retreat and um, do uploading a little vlog before the next regular episode of the podcast. So I will make sure I share when that is put up. And that's it for today. So I'm going to go ahead and get dinner ready for... When the littles get home, I'm sure they're going to be hungry since they went straight from school to dance. So happy knitting and thanks to everyone who participated in the Cold Shoulder Cal. It was a blast. And keep an eye out for pictures on Instagram from the Fiber Retreat and some upcoming videos. So thanks for joining me and I will see you soon.